There is a voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. And soon we will hear this voice crying out. Next week, in fact, this will be our Advent reading. And yet this week, on this first day of Advent, this week we hear a different voice, or at least a voice with a different tenor. It is not a voice of proclamation, a voice crying out, prepare the way. Instead, it is simply a voice that's crying, a voice in the wilderness crying out to God. The people of Israel are so far from home. Their city is destroyed, their temple is burned, and they have been taken as captives of war far away into Babylon. There's no holy place to worship God. There has been so much death and destruction and suffering. How can they even begin to pray? And how could God have let this happen? Isaiah's prayer is a haunting reminder, an artifact that preserves the story of displaced people from long ago. And though it makes sense that it's included in our Bible, still we might ask, why are we reading this prayer right now? What could this prophet's ancient lament possibly have to do with getting ready for Christmas? Isn't this supposed to be a holly jolly season? Isn't this a time when we are supposed to focus on twinkling lights and baking cookies, on wrapping presents and sending out cards? Now there's nothing wrong with enjoying the beauty of the holiday season. There's nothing wrong with putting up a tree and singing carols and choosing gifts for people we love. And yet in church, the way we get ready for Christmas is a little bit different from what we do out in the secular world. In church, we have the season of Advent with its plaintive music and its self-reflection and with the heartfelt prayers of an ancient prophet who's longing for redemption and the presence of God. Now we know, of course, that Jesus was born some 2,000 years ago. And yet during Advent, we also acknowledge all the ways that the kingdom of God proclaimed and ushered in by Jesus, we acknowledge the ways the reign of God has not yet fully come. Even now, we are in need of God's salvation. Even now, we long for a time when God's will is done on earth as in heaven. Even now, we need a savior a savior who has already come, it's true, but also a savior whose work is not yet done. And so we are still waiting, waiting for Christ, waiting for the real presence of God in our world. This is a theological reason for Advent, a kind of church tradition reason for taking time to ponder the prayers of a prophet. 
but it seems there may also be a more practical reason for the season of Advent and for focusing now on a prophet's prayer. And that's because the holiday season, this most wonderful time of the year, can also be a difficult season and the most challenging time of the year. Hours of daylight are on the wane, and that lack of light can do a, a number on our bodies and leave us feeling tired and depressed. And holidays can cause grief to resurface, sometimes when we least expect it. We remember the Christmases of years gone by and all of those people who are no longer with us. And when it seems like everybody else is so happy and all those commercials on TV, everybody looks so happy and we may just wonder why on earth we can't feel happy as well. Maybe we need the prayers of Advent, both the prophet's prayers and also our own. Maybe we need God to hallow this season and to give this season a deeper meaning than our busyness and baking and buying. Maybe we need God to help us get in touch with our deepest longings and to touch our pain with healing and hope. In the midst of distress and longing for home, in the midst of disappointment and aching despair, in the midst of all this, Isaiah lets loose with an unfiltered and passionate kind of prayer. Where are you, God? And why won't you come down like in the days of old? Well, yes, of course, it is partly our fault. Yes, we sinned, and you hid yourself away. But even so, dear God, we rely on your promise. We are your people, and we belong to you. This is a passionate, even an audacious kind of prayer. Can you Im imagine being that demanding when you pray? to God. And yet I think that Advent can be a season when we remember that we can offer prayers to God with honesty and with passion. We can trust God enough to tell the truth about who we really are and how things really are going with us. We don't have to try to defend ourselves or to pretend that we are better than we are. We can be honest to God about all our mixed motives. And we can own up to the truth that sometimes we bring our troubles on ourselves. And yet, even then, just like Isaiah, we can be bold when we talk to God in prayer, we can ask for God's forgiveness, we can ask for God's help, and we can demand that God pays attention to all the suffering and injustice that we find in our own lives and in the world. When we pray, we can pour out our hearts to God. But still, we might ask, who is this God? Who is the one that we talk to in prayer? We might say that God represents for us our highest ideals and aspirations. We might say that God embodies justice and compassion and ultimate power and ultimate knowledge. And yet, according to the Bible, God is even more 
According to the Bible, God is a living, active, and conscious presence. God hears the cries of those who are oppressed, and God works to bring their liberation. God gathers a community and gives that community a framework and a law that helps to make sure that everyone can have all that they need. Isaiah is not addressing an abstract idea. Isaiah is addressing the God of Israel, a God who has a long-standing relationship with a particular people. Isaiah wants God to display God's power in an obvious and earth-shaking way. And yet often it seems that God acts among us in quieter, more subtle, unexpected, and even hidden ways. Years in the future, the Emperor Cyrus will defeat the armies of Babylon and the people of Israel will finally go back home. And yet, even as Isaiah is praying, maybe God is already at work in the very words of the prophet's prayer. Maybe through prayer, God is bringing hope and strengthening the faith of the people. You wouldn't cry out to God, after all, unless you had some sense that God might be there you wouldn't make an impassioned plea if you didn't believe, at least a little, that God might act to ease your suffering and to bring justice. In fact, I wonder if maybe part of the way God works in the world is through our prayers. Prayer, after all, gives us a way to honestly acknowledge our brokenness and to ask for God's forgiveness and healing. And prayer can protect us from just giving in and resigning ourselves to the way things are right now. It's easy to get tired of being outraged. It's easy to see that or to see suffering and injustice as simply inevitable, as part of a normal that we can't really change. But prayer can shake us out of our complacency. Prayer can give us a hope and a longing for what God desires and envisions for our world. No one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God but you who works for those who wait for him. And it seems that prayer is a kind of waiting. It's a way of developing our sensitivity for what God is doing within us and around us. Prayer can help us get in sync with God's timing. Prayer can help us tap into God's power. If God's presence and work are like a stream that's flowing, then prayer can help us go along with that current. And then finally, prayer can make us malleable and teachable like softened clay or a trusting child. It seems that prayer is a way for God to form us and shape us so that we can fit into God's work for salvation, so that we can receive the gifts of grace that God so freely gives. And so as we begin this Advent season, and as we enter into the very busy weeks ahead, I invite us all to carve out a little time to be with God in prayer. Like the prophet, we can pour out our passion and our longing. 
We can admit our mistakes and trust in God's love. We can be bold enough to remember God's promises and audacious enough to pray for their fulfillment right here and right now. I believe that through prayer and through God's grace, we can become the change we long to see. I believe that through prayer, we can be a part of God's own work for the redemption of our world. Amen.